I think it's about time I start reminding you all of the episode title leaks, as I'm sure you've already seen them. But anyways, here the title leaks. It's time to stop! Whilst the topic of today's video addresses pretty much all those episodes, I've covered it for about two weeks. But if you're new here and haven't seen them, check out my previous videos. But for those who usually attend these discussions, I'm so sorry. And well... I'd like to take this chance to apologize! <laughs> To absolutely nobody! Jokes aside, there are definitely some interesting things that you will take away from this video that you didn't know before. And I think it's really worthwhile sticking with it, because these points will certainly build suspense for the next few weeks. Please do enjoy the video. So this video and the points I'm going to make has a very intentional end, and I'd like you to stick with me along the way. Otherwise, there's very little takeaway for you. We're all very much looking forward to the final climax battle against Millennium One, which safe to say approached us a lot quicker than we expected, listed specifically in episode 50 of the leaked titles. Again, you've seen them. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, there's just so much that happens in the next three weeks, across episodes 48, 49, 50, that I feel like it's crucial to discuss this very particular event so that we can understand more about what will probably happen before it even happens, or at least get very, very close. This particular event and subject of the video is the miraculous mega evolution caused by the prayers of a digital world. So look, we know what the causes of the mega evolution that's unexpected. That being stated in the synopsis, it's the prayers of all the digital world at once. In my opinion, that's a fair trade. You know, that's like DBZ spirit bomb-esque, but in this case, it's mega evolutions and you know naturally it's very symbolic it's a very organic take for a shonen anime so as people may think it just pulled out of nowhere this is what they do a lot of the time and in times of desperation you have miracles and it was as taichi said every crisis creates an opportunity so take that any which way you will but the question is who is the subject of this mega evolution answer the question but before we can understand why certain candidates are more or less likely to be the point of this mega evolution we we need to do a few deductions, which is why it's important to stick with me. AKA my least favorite time because I actually have to think about things and present a sensible argument to you guys without just expressing how I feel in memes. Oh! But I'll keep it interesting for you guys. So. From the start, we need to start with episode 48. Why? Because there's a lot going on that states what's going on, as you probably already know. Biomon, Palmon, Gomamon, and eventually Metal Gururumon are going to be absorbed by Mugendramon and taken prisoner. Following this, War Greymon and Taichi do their utmost to stop Mugendramon. We don't necessarily know if the others are freed yet, other than Metal Gururumon, because it was stated that it battled Griffamon after the fact. But I will assume, for the purposes of this video, that after the battle with Megendramon and its self-destruction, that Biomon, Palmon, and Gomemon are freed, along with Metal Gururumon. How are you going to have one Digimon freed and the others aren't? We are also made aware, when Millenniumon descends onto the digital world, Taichi and Wargreymon are still out of commission at this point. So I'm just going to throw it out there that Wargreymon, Taichi, they are not the subjects of this miraculous mega evolution, as I'm assuming they're still out of the picture. Then we also have Metal Gururumon, who was occupied with Griffamon, assuming I mean, Griffin wasn't already absorbed by Millenniumon. So just playing it safe, I'm ruling out Metal Gururumon as getting any kind of alternative mega evolution. No Crash Gururumon, I don't think that's going to happen. If it does, I will eat my hat. <laughs> Therefore, provided that all of the others have been freed and that they are left available, that means you've narrowed down eight to six potential mega evolutions. We continue. So, Takeru and Angimon recently got their power up to Holy Angimon with that very important episode with Devimon in episode 46. I do think in these episodes it's going to be Holy Angimon flexing its power since we've not really seen much of Holy Angemon, and we got it so recently. So I do doubt it'll be TK getting any more of the limelight as he's had so much already. So at least in my book, we've narrowed down six to five. So if you consider all the remaining, Hikari, Izzy, Joe, Mimi, Sora. It feels like Izzy is the closest one to a mega evolution given that he had a very blatant episode where he had an essence form, unmistakably Hercules Kabutaimon. No Easter egg, no nothing, it's in front of you. Whereas the rest, it was a lot more discreet and or did not happen. But that's just my head cannon. But really, it could be any one of them. But let's say any one of them does achieve the mega level. How is that going to stop Millennium on? Especially with Wargrimmon being down and then you've only got Metal Gururumon. It's not going to stop, defeat or force some kind of tactical retreat on Millennium on just having two mega evolutions available to fight it. And you'll be right in thinking it certainly doesn't. 
they would have no chance, unless the each individual Megas are so much more powerful than we actually expected. But, and if you stayed with me long enough in this video, here's the payoff, this is a twist. So when I first did the video on the episode title leaks, yes, I know, I'm sorry, I'm going on and on. I made it very clear in the comments to a lot of people that these are the only translations available for the episode titles and the synopses. So, one of the alternatives I gave a lot of people in the comments was Wikimon on Twitter. That page usually posts quite accurate translations, but they're not usually out as early. But in these alternative translations, there's a madness going on. Shout out to Wikimon on Twitter, by the way. The translations provided by Wikimon actually states quite differently. The following. When the digital world is about to be enveloped in darkness, all the Digimon pray for peace and their thoughts awaken their ultimate evolutions, which no one expects. Now, many of you probably already know why this is insane. You might have a situation where the overwhelming prayers and hopes of the entire digital world resounding around the chosen ones causes a miraculous phenomenon where all the Digidestin achieve the mega level, at least briefly, at once. Is it temporary? Are they all essence forms? But in this situation, this makes the most sense because Omega Mon's off the cards because War Greymon is down, War Greymon is down, and you're fighting Millennium Mon, who's just resurrected. This is literally their only way to win. Or maybe they don't win. Maybe it's a complete still. But to add to this, the episode after episode 50, 51, that we'll get this law exposition dump on the crests and what they really mean in the reboot. And I think that'll be the episode where things are explained retrospectively, immediately explaining the simultaneous mega evolution in episode 50 and then the rest that came before that. So we might actually have this all out simultaneous mega evolution phenomenon amongst the chosen one because of the dire situation they're in and the entire digital world is sending their prayers. And I'm assuming there is a lot Lot of meaning to that. But look, I know what you're thinking. Oh, but Taiji and Matt got their individual evolution sequences. The rest are being done dirty. Just because they simultaneously mega evolve once doesn't mean they won't individually mega evolve ever again. We might get individual evolution sequences later on because when you think about it, we still have Crest Groomon to get through. So they're definitely not past the adversity stage just because the fight of Mon is over, we think. And there's so much of the reboot to go, like it's nowhere near done. From episode 51 to 66, if you take the first 15 episodes of the reboot, so much got done, a lot happened in that time. And leading up to that, they were about to fight Aizmon. That's how much time there is. So I wouldn't fret about these mega evolutions not getting their individual sequence because they still might in the future. But right now, we're probably gonna see some really crazy scene of all the chosen ones and their partners. Now we did think this was gonna be a thing quite a while ago. I know a few people did call it. Me, myself, imagine something like this to happen. And I'm okay with that idea because to be completely honest, it's really hard to isolate each of the chosen ones and their partners from the group without A, making a lot of the fan base really annoyed because they've already split them up already, and B, you're not going to be able to have your own time to shine when you've got well, Greymon and Metal Groomon next to you when you're fighting some bog standard mega like Crossmon. They're just never going to have those opportunities. So it takes an event like this to quite literally break the chain on the mega evolution so that they can make that jump a lot easier in the future for the remaining 15 episodes. But guys, please tell me your thoughts on all of this and this topic. What do you think of a miraculous simultaneous mega evolution? Again, we don't know if they really are the actual mega evolutions or the essence forms. We don't know if they're temporary or not maybe they can't access them again was it a fluke we just don't know enough yet so don't assume it's going to be all bad it'll probably look amazing but when you really think about it how are you going to have a story where each of the eight chosen ones have their individual arcs where they fight a conveniently placed mega Digimon they can just happen to beat if they mega evolve there and then that corresponds to their crests all at once. Doing that over and over again eight times. People had an issue with the way the ultimate evolutions were done because it was literally just back to back. But that is what you would get again with the Megas. So this really might be one of the only ways to do it, to be honest. And even if their individual evolution sequences to Mega were skipped out on, it doesn't mean we won't get any great fight sequences with them and see all their powers on display. But yes, a much longer video today, but if you made it this far thank you so much for watching and bearing with me i like doing these long form videos more because i can really flesh out the topics but regardless look execution matters the most i'm really excited either way either they pull it off or they don't and we won't know until it happens once it's happened then we'll talk about it but until then thank you so much for watching please like comment and subscribe don't miss a very exciting episode 48 review tomorrow keep your bells on i'll see you on sunday but most importantly take care